Whiskey River Piper here. Welcome back to the front porch. The meat lady. My Airedale Terrier. And uh, the subject of my video response to Doc Bravo's 400 subscription giveaway. The theme he chose was Man's Best Friend. So the first thing that came to mind was my pup. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the Airedale breed and a little bit about her and yeah, make a video about it. I've been wanting to do a video about Airedales for a while, so it was the perfect opportunity to put all those notes and all that research to work. Let's jump in. In true, true Doc Bravo fashion. Housekeeping! Got <laughs> the Peterson Terra. On this beautiful sunny spring day here in northern Utah. Waiting for things to dry out a little bit so I can get some yard work done. Smoking some Peterson Deluxe since it's Saturday and the wife is home all day. And she likes the beard note of this particular blend. So I, uh, of course, want to get some sugar later, so that smell good. The original beard balm. <laughs> Tobacco smoke. And have some black coffee for this morning. Trying to wake up, warm the bones up. Alright, we'll get started. So, Airedale Terrier is a breed from England from the Air River Valley or Air River Dale. So, Air Dale. Primarily bred as a hunting dog. Uh uh, hey, you're okay. You're okay. Lady, no. Hey, you're okay. She likes to bark a lot. Um, primarily a hunting dog for waterfowl and things like that. Um, but she also uses a war dog and a uh, police dog as well. Here in the States, more so a hunting dog for big game and fowl and stuff like that. When we got a lady, my mom, who lives in Montana, said that everyone she knows up there that has an Airedale uses them for hunting dogs, or hunting dogs, hunting bears. Hey, it's enough. It's okay. Uh -uh. You're okay. You're okay. Hey. Shh. It's okay. That's enough. It's okay. Lady, no. Anyways. She's gonna bark. I apologize. That's okay. Hey. Enough. So yeah, a little bit of history overall of the breed. There's two strains now. There's the working Airedales and the show Airedales. And they really couldn't be more different. The working Airedales are bed. Now, hey, lay down. It's okay. Good girl. Working Airedales are more stout, a little more robust. When they're like a darker instead of the brown, it's more of a red, and they don't have as much of the beard that she does as a show Airedale, or show lines anyway. Lighter, more contrasted between the black top coat and the brown fur, and then they can get the really, really long beards, so. Stubborn as a mule, as you can see, but great dogs. I'll never own another dog. I'll never buy another dog. I might own another one, but I'll never seek after another dog. They're just fantastic. So, a um, little bit of a uh, fun anecdote. Well, it's not an anecdote, it's an actual story. So, during World War I, an Aerodel named Jack helped save a British battalion in 1918. 
Jack went to France as a messenger and guard with the Sherwood Foresters, who were sent to man an advanced post. There was an intense barrage four miles behind the lines, cutting off every line of communication at headquarters. Unless headquarters could be informed that reinforcements were needed, the entire battalion would risk being killed by the advancing enemy. It was impossible for any man to dodge the fire, but Jack provided a small chance and a glimmer of hope. The vital message was slipped into the pouch attached to the dog's collar, and this loyal and courageous Airedale, keeping low to the ground, ran through a barrage of enemy fire for half a mile to deliver the message to HQ. When he got there, he was badly injured. His jaw was broken, and one leg was severely splintered. He did his duty, delivered the message, then dropped dead at the receiver's feet. Stubborn dogs. But, uh... Lots of cases of that during World War One, Hero of World War One, really, as far as canines go. Um, and as stories like this, as well as Presidents Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, and Warren Harding, them all owning Airedales, that led to a rise in popularity with the breed in the 1920s, really, was when it hit the peak of popularity. Um... Roosevelt, actually, one of my favorite presidents and a hero of mine. I'll have to do a video on him. Not that I would be able to say anything that hasn't already been said, but it's my channel. Um, but he said an Airedale can do anything any other dog can do, and then lick the other dog if he has to. So, I was already a huge fan of, or was becoming a huge fan of President Roosevelt when, uh, we got Lady, and when I found that out, I was tickled, to say the least. So, pretty cool. And I'll give a couple notable examples. Of Airedales through the years. A famous one was Kitty, owned by John Jacob Astor the Ninth. No, that's the fifth, fourth. Roman numerals are hard for me. Fourth, who perished during the sinking of the Titanic. Astor was the richest passenger aboard the RMS Titanic and was thought to be among the richest people in the world at the time when, with a net worth of nearly 87 million when he died, which would be equivalent to 2.26 billion dollars today. So like Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Another one was Laddie Boy, who was owned by President Warren G. Harding, like I said before. This is an interesting one. He was the first celebrity White House pet, of no doubt a product of the Roaring Twenties, and all the opulence that went with it. Um, Harding had a special chair hand car for him to sit on at very important cabinet meetings, and uh, the dog howled constantly for three days prior to President Harding's death in August 1923 at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, knowing of his master's imminent demise. In memory of President Harding and honoring his former employment as a paper boy, newsboys collected 19,134 pennies to be remelted and sculpted into a statue of Laddie Boy. Another famous Airedale was Duke, who was owned by John Wayne. And from said dog, Wayne got his nickname of the Duke. A local fireman at the station on his route to school in Glendale, California, where he grew up, started calling him Little Duke, because he never went anywhere without his huge Airedale Terrier, Duke. He preferred Duke to Marion, as he was born marrying Robert Morrison, and the nickname stuck. You know, I did not know that prior to getting an Airedale Terrier. And, uh, that just makes them all the better. He gave John Wayne his nickname. So, there you go. Anyway, about this particular Airedale, she is two and a half. She, we adopted her from our neighbors next door who thought the dog was very pretty, but didn't, didn't fully appreciate all the work that goes into keeping an Airedale happy, especially when they're young. It's a ton of training, a ton of exercise. They are stubborn and wicked smart. So if they're not engaged mentally, you're going to have problems. So 
I felt I was up to the task, and so far, she seems pretty happy. Um, but I friggin' love this dog. She is great. She is fantastic with the kids. Has never, not even once, even growled or even pulled her ears back with any of the kids. Mine or any of that I've ever been around. Great with other dogs. You know, once she gets to know them a little bit after a few minutes, you know. Um, greatest doorbell ever. <laughs> Although that can get tricky during nap time. Um, but just a good dog. Just loves to, loves to be loved. And that's what you like. And that's what you like out of a dog. So, yeah, she's a good pup. We'll never own another dog. Airedale, Terrier, all the way. So, she's just great. A good pup all around. Love her to death. So, in that vein, I of course have a poem, because that's kind of what we do around here on the front porch. It is called The Airedale Speaks, and the author is unknown. And it goes, Some dogs lick anybody's hand, which makes most people think they're grand. You'll hear it said and oft repeated that we are spoiled, in fact conceited. And why? Because we stay aloof? Until we have unquestioned proof that some who seek to win our favor and have no understanding savor are genuinely worthy of an honest dog's undying love? Those who contend that we are cold would also kick if we were bold. We do not claim to be hobnobbish, but neither are we really snobbish. A wise man once was heard to say, the Airedale has a knowing way. He can distinguish friends from those at whom he should turn up his nose. I thought that's really funny. Now, lady here, she's never been written to anyone, but maybe I just only associate with very good people. But either way, she may not be a bear dog that hunts giant grizzlies up and over mountains. She may not be a war dog that saves battalions of Englishmen. But she's my dog, and that makes her the best dog in the world. And I am lucky to have her. And Andrew Yu, what did he say? That's a good quote about dogs. He said, if I could be half the person my dog is, a Charles Yu, I'd be twice the human that I am. And I agree with that sentiment very much. So, in closing, hope everyone has a great Memorial Day weekend. Hope you have time for fun and family and friends. Also hope you have time for reflection and what this holiday is all about. Let those smoke now who never smoked before, and those who always smoked, now smoke them more. Thanks for stopping by the front porch, YouTube. Lady now, catch you next time.